a Jordan Peterson Bible study. That's what it seems is on the way from Daily Wire. Is he going to go deeper and make more bold proclamations about his faith, or is he looking to become the next celebrity pastor? We're going to be reacting to the trailer, giving you a bit of insight. Stay tuned. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Peterson released the trailer for a new Bible study that he's doing over the book of Exodus. We're going to be reacting to it. We're going to be tying in the broader spectrum of where Jordan Peterson seems to be with the topic of faith and God, and also looking at another clip that I think will actually glue a lot of this together for us. So let's just jump right in. This is off of Daily Wire Plus, and there's a longer extended clip from this thing that's available. Uh, check this out. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Turns out that a book is more durable than, than stone. It's more durable than a castle. It's more durable than an empire. I like this vibe with the round table discussion. Obviously, theatrically, Daily Wire tends to crush the production of anything they're doing. Uh, but there's a point made in this video that's really interesting in terms of tying in, I think, where and where, where more and more Jordan Peterson sh seems to be showing his hand. You don't get away with anything. And so you might think you can bend the fabric of reality and that you can treat people instrumentally and that you can bow to the tyrant and violate your conscience without cost. You will pay the piper. It's gonna call you out of that slavery into freedom, even if that pulls you into the desert. So a lot of this is them looking at Exodus from a psychological standpoint and what is the allegory and the narrative around it, the philosophy around it. But there's this interesting application point that you're gonna to see towards the end of this clip. And God is ethic-centered, not ethnic-centered. Well, do you want the Pharaoh on your side or do you want God on your side? God is ethic-centered, not ethnic-centered. That's interesting. Sorry, that's kind of... That's uh, uh, Prager U president. Okay, that's who that is. He's a Jewish gentleman. Question. There's a profound sense here that, that what is going on with the Israelites is the contrast to Pharaoh, right? Like, when there are no terms, will you go? And the Israelites had to say, we will go under any terms. And we're going to see that there's something else going on here that is far more cosmic and deeper than what you can imagine. The highest ethical spirit to which we're beholden is presented precisely as that spirit that allies itself with the cause of freedom against tyranny. And yes, it's exactly. That's interesting. Okay, now watch this part. Watch this clip here. Hey, I want villains to get punished. But do you want I want villains to get punished. Okay, listen closely to what Prager U says here. Both with the cause of freedom against tyranny. And yes, exactly. I want villains to get punished. But do you want the villains to learn before they have to pay the ultimate price? That's such a Christian question. <laughs> but do you want villains to learn before they pay the ultimate price? Response here. That's such a Christian question. That's such a Christian question. Okay. Here's the idea that Christianity presents, in my opinion, versus every other world religion, okay? All the other Abrahamic faiths. Christianity, and here it's witness in Jordan Peterson, and again, I'm not saying Jordan Peterson is the poster boy for Christianity. We're gonna get to kind of where he is with God and his proclamations of God, but what is presented in that entire exchange, in my opinion, seems to be the idea that Christianity allows for mercy, and allows for grace. Mercy is not getting something that you should have gotten in terms of punishment. Grace is getting a gift that you had no business getting. Christianity, and specifically the cross, presents both mercy for the sinner and grace as a gift for salvation. That's what makes it distinct, right? And so when he snaps back and said, that's such a Christian question. Why? Because Christians, based on the cross, which is the, the, the greatest story ever told about the greatest man that's ever lived, about the greatest tragedy ever, presents grace and mercy for the sinner. Jesus living the life we couldn't live, dying to death we should have died on the cross in our place, creating a pathway for us to stand before a holy God despite our sin because Jesus covers our sin on the cross. It's a beautiful picture, but what's best about it, as C.S. Lewis says, it's actually true. Okay. And so we're going to look at another clip specifically going deeper on where Jordan Peterson's faith is and kind of why he sometimes seems to tiptoe around certain things. But before we do that, guys, I got something very special I want to show you, and I hope you could help me out with this. You may not know I make music, but I got a new song coming out. And it's something I need you to do, but first, I want you to hear a snippet of the song. I went from 
Being a porn addict too Sharing the gospel with a porn actress Who was criticized for being low status By the same OnlyFans who treat us so lavish I'm confused I swear y'all thought he did doing podcasts Hot takes He still can rap Now in order to get this song to the top of Spotify I need your help I need you to click the link below Or go to RuslanToTheMoon.com And pre-save this song What is a pre-save? It means that this song will be added to your library To remind you to listen to it the day it comes out And it also tells Spotify's algorithm That millions of people need to hear this song So help me promote Christian music That contextualizes the gospel And will help change lives By going to RuslanToTheMoon.com Or clicking the link below Oh, they got me with the dramatics You know that a moment cannot be static too soon Bruce Lawn. I want to show you guys something that my brother John McCray did, which in my opinion is one of the best breakdowns regarding Jordan Peterson's views and faith that I've seen in a very long time. This is an amazing video. Maybe I'll do a longer reaction to it on the Bless God Studios uh, channel, but check this out real quick. Let me make sure that we're playing at the right speed. Yep, watch this. The other line is, um, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Thought that about right, which means something approximating just because you make a claim to moral virtue, let's say, your belief in God, which I, th I, I can't see th how you can make a higher claim to moral virtue than that. Mm. You know, I mean, agnostic, atheistic, I, I don't really care. The, the, the purpose, the point is something like this. You imagine something of ultimate transcendent value. I don't care whether you believe in it or not, but imagine that something like that exists. And then you swear allegiance to it, which is to say, I believe in this. I mean, there's a heavy moral burden that comes along with that just to allow yourself to utter the words without feeling that you should be immediately struck down appropriately by lightning. Listen to this next bit. And so, well, and so I think that's why that question makes me uncomfortable. He always gets kind of triggered when people ask, do you believe in God? Specifically with the idea of the resurrection. Do you believe the resurrection is literal? Because, hey, listen, we can look at the scriptures as amazing stories and where myth forms and all these great things, Exodus, right? But when you start getting into specifics, hey, do you believe Jesus literally and bodily rose from the dead? Uh, Jordan Peterson has historically kind of backed away from that question, right? And it's because he understands that if that's true, my goodness, that means that everything Jesus spoke about and testified is true because the New Testament documents are then reliable and it really changes everything about how we are to view the world. And Jordan Peterson kind of is wrestling with this. It's that I don't think I have a, I don't think I have a right to make that proclamation. Now, one now listen to John, uh, John McRae's response here. The thing that I think is admirable about Peterson is that he takes belief in God so seriously that he's able to reach conclusions like this, conclusions that most of us don't think deeply enough about in order to appreciate. He takes seriously who God is by definition and what that demands of us. And it's because of this that he says that he doesn't think that he has a right to say that he believes in God. And he's right. The fact is, none of us do. None of us are able to live up to the standard of what we truly should in light of the immensity of God's existence. And if there's one reoccurring theme that we see by looking at the Bible, it's that over and over, humans continually keep choosing to do what's wrong and aren't able to live up to God's standard of perfection. And as a result, they separate themselves from a relationship with God. And it's so good. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of me reacting to that video, let me know. What I think this ultimately points humans to, us being humans, is that, hey, we are so flawed and so jacked up and such a mess that that is why we need a bridge to God that is fully God and fully man. Hence, this is why Jesus had to come. It all goes back to the good news. It all goes back to, hey, our good works, our moral works are still but filthy rags in the sight of a holy God. And that is why Jesus had to come. That is why Jesus had to live the life we couldn't live. That is why Jesus had to lay down his life. That is why Jesus creates a pathway for us to, to, to be before a holy God because he dealt with the consequence of sin. Second Corinthians 5 says, he made him who knew no sin to be sin so that because of that work, we can become the righteousness of God. That is really good news. And so I'm excited for Jordan Peterson to be looking at the scriptures. Whenever the scriptures talked about, I think it's good. But I'm also curious where this entire thing goes. Is he going to be making more and more bold professions of faith? Or is he going to be uh, kind of, you know, really 
answering the question of where he stands with the resurrection of Jesus. I don't know these questions. Uh, I know the, I don't know the answers to these, but they're definitely interesting questions. And uh, I'm really intrigued by this entire Exodus course that they're launching, roundtable discussion, all, all types of different perspectives uh, there at the conversations. And so I'm excited. Um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to link up John McRae's video over here because I think you guys will find a lot of value from it. It's called Deconstructing Peterson's Reason for Not Believing in God. It's brilliant, okay? And if you aren't, consider partnering with us on Patreon. It's only $5 a month that helps us continue making videos like this, contextualizing the gospel of Jesus. And uh, I would really appreciate it. So I'll see you guys over there.